movement. And so the investigative side of me decided to look into this. So I have literally in the past month spent 12 to 18 hours a day, not just with my other research, but with checking this out, making phone calls through some reliable contacts of mine. I started gathering more and more information from separate sources. <clears throat> then when I finally saw where it was happening and then realized that now the US, along with some other countries, have now all of a sudden targeted Yemen because of Al Qaeda, which Al Qaeda is nothing but a network. That's it. You know, any Al Qaeda is really a, a, just a network. It's not. It was all designed, but you know that's a whole nother story. So, Al Qaeda as a name is used to invoke fear and gain compliance or needs of whatever the global elite wants at that time. Yemen has now been picked because of certain what's happening now at the Stargate which actually was officially is being said the Stargate opened on January 5th of this year. The other information, so I started making phone calls, then I started getting more emails. Um, uh, well, wait a minute. You're saying the Stargate over Gulf of Aden opened on January 5th of 2010 or 2009? The, what, I, what I know for fact is that it opened up on January 5th of this year, of 2010. Okay. Um, now, I, I, because I, I've heard more information about this, uh, there is information out there saying that the Stargate was identified prior to that. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes, it, it's been going on. Things started really getting on the internet and the news um, really started a couple months ago. Okay. In December, things, I mean, it's now all over. You know, I have a whole file that I tried to get, which I will get to, of tons of information, even stuff on YouTube. And believe it, the stuff on YouTube, there's, you know, there's a lot of garbage on YouTube, but there's certain videos on YouTube. If you YouTube Stargate Gulf of Aden, you will see things are absolute facts. Okay. Based on other people that have gathered information. However, it's been known, this, this, Stargate in the Gulf of Aden has been known for quite a while um, and a lot of certain countries want to gain, want to have their hand in the cookie jar. And, you know, one country wants to have more of a hand in the cookie jar than the other country. This is why in 2008 I was approached by a captain that worked for the uh, United States Marine Corps Intelligence and had, you know, out of the blue come up to me and said, you know, we are wanting to recruit you for needs of service again. Now at this time, I was a mess. I was having a lot going on. I thought, I still at that point thought I was really just crazy. And I wasn't working. I was, you know, living month to month. So, and that's how they, exactly how they want you. And so I volunteered to go back. Yet, after I volunteered to go back, there are parts that are foggy, but I had met at Camp Pelton with this captain, several other gentlemen who I am not quite sure who they worked for, but obviously high up the food chain in the government hierarchy, and then two generals. One general now is actually working as um, on the Joint Chiefs of Staff in charge of all special operations for the United States military. Are they, you able to name this person? Do you want to name this person or not? I should probably wait to mention that. Okay. It's not that I'm afraid of mentioning it, but when we do my more extensive interview, I have already decided to release certain names. Okay. But I want to just really focus on the Gulf of Adan and what's going on there. But okay. I will say I will be mentioning his name. Okay. Just not yet. Okay. Um, but uh, this is the same general that I've given you copies of the emails. Yes. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And he told me that in North Africa, and it's still happening, but even back in 2008, there was massive military movement, U.S. military movement in North Africa. They were gearing up for something. Um, that was one of the assignments that I was going to be going to to look over some operations there. 
there was also big movement happening in the area of the Suez Canal, which is right in that location of the Gulf of Aden. I then started meeting um, top black op military personnel from all over the world, a lot specifically from Australia, Australian SAS. Um, several of these gentlemen were definitely Australian, but were of Middle Eastern descent, who were being trained to conduct false flag operations in the Middle East. Shortly after this happened, there were some false flag events that occurred. The big one in Mumbai, which was absolutely orchestrated through our country and the UK. Um, that I was actually told for hand information by this general and some other people on his staff. Um, we started developing um, a new team that I was placed in charge of. We started out by doing a lot of stateside uh, training operations with local police force. Um, specifically, we started the, the groundbreaking one was with Twin Palms, out in Twin Palms by, you know, which 29 Palms Marine Base is close by, where the U.S. Marine Corps was doing, this is where they started doing the um, security checkpoints, which they now do a lot all up and down uh, California, a lot, you know, in Southern California, even south of where we're at right now. Why am I explaining this? Here's why. The movements that are happening right now for military, there are actually a few secret military bases in North Africa right now and in Yemen and other areas where there are actually more U.S. military personnel than locals in the towns and villages in that area. Why are all these false flag operations happening? Okay, I'm getting to the very important point. The very important point is these small false flag operations that have been happening the operations that I dealt with, with actually conducting false flag operations, even having movement of UN vehicles here in California, which I witnessed, I saw caravans, I talked to people, even the point where I was with a team walking around downtown Pasadena just before New Year's Eve because we had received intel, which I later found out was false, but they told regular military personnel and local police that a munitions train that was coming from Barstow to Camp Pendleton, after a check in Barstow, they realized that 5,000 pounds of C4 explosive was missing off the train. Immediately, high alert was put in, um, security checkpoints were placed all over the place. I found out that this was not true. I started doing some of my own digging into finding out why this was all going on. Shortly after that, I was dropped from the project. And um, I had to move out of my apartment. My computer was yet again shut down, my cell phone and fried. Um, I had, my, my place was broken into when we went to do the police report, my roommate and I at the time. The police officer did not fill out a police report. I had surveillance vehicles in front of my place. I was just, the heat was getting on. I actually had to put my stuff in storage and stay on the couch with a and friend of mine. This was a year ago, is that right? This was, this occurred all in, in March of last year, yes. Okay. Now, what does this all gear up to? This all gears up to, based on my experience, and yes, I guess you could say based on some certain psychic ability that I have that... I wasn't necessarily born with, but with things that I will get into in the interview, it was brought out in me through techniques that they have, the Project Town has learned to really perfect. Um, there's going to be a major false flag operation happening this year. I don't exactly know when. 